every day will be a completely new subject matter. Uh, there will be very few days where we'll cover the same thing twice. Electrical would probably be the one exception and reels. We're hoping to get at least two weeks in on reels. So most of you are going to be in the golf industry, so we're going to try to get in and, and we'll deal with some of the basics of reels. Um, obviously, in two weeks, which is only eight hours, we can't get very far in reels. We're not going to be grinding reels. We'll show you grinders. We'll talk about the differences in grinders so that when you get to a golf course, if you're in charge of buying a grinder, you have an idea of why you would want to pick certain grinders over others. And when you're talking to people, you understand a little bit in terminology and stuff like that. And that's really what we're trying to do here. I've listed on here in the first sheet kind of some class expectations and purpose, why you guys are taking this class. And the first one is basically makes you a better operator. When you're operating a piece of equipment and that engine starts to make these funny sounds, why do you need to stop? You hear a rattling sound, you hear a whining sound. It kind of makes you understand what's going on with that engine and why it's so important to shut it down or get it to someone and say, hey, listen to this, tell me what you think about it. The other thing is, it helps you fix the obvious things. You'd be amazed if you go to work at golf courses very long, how many failures or problems that operators have and they just ran out of gas. Or they bumped the key with their, their knee and they shut the mower off and they couldn't figure out how to get it started. Or they just simply didn't put the brake on when they went to start it. Oh, it won't start. The battery must be dead. The engine seized up. And they just had to step on the brake and they would have started up. So we're trying to get through some of those real simple things that you can check and get you to understand it so that you're not sitting out there trying to figure out why this machine's stuck and you have to walk you know, four fairways back to the maintenance facilities. The guy gives you a ride back out there and he gets on and he pushes the brake, turns the key, starts up and he looks at you like, where did you come from? <laughs> so it just makes you look better and makes you better operators. The next one, um, once you become manager superintendents, there's going to be times where you're going to hire someone and if you know something about mechanics, you can reevaluate that guy's performance and what he's doing and sometimes you need to let them go. And if you don't know anything about mechanics, you, other than the fact that equipment doesn't operate, you don't have a clue as to whether he's doing it right or wrong. And so it kind of helps you do, deal with your budgets and the hiring firing process. Um, it doesn't leave you helpless if you're out on the course. Budgeting and evaluating. You go onto a course and you take it over and there's a whole bunch of equipment there. You need to be able to decide, do I just ditch all that equipment and start all over or do I fix some of this stuff and, and buy some new or how are we going to go about that? When you go to a trade show or you, a salesman comes and tries to sell you a new piece of equipment, it gives you a little bit of understanding. When we get into engines, we're not going to really tell you how to take an engine apart. We're going to talk about the differences. What's the difference between buying a Briggs and Stratton engine and a Tecumseh engine and a Kohler engine? What's the differences in them? So that when you buy a Greens mower and it comes with five engine options, what's the difference? Obviously, there's a difference in price, but what's the difference in the engine? And we'll talk about what makes the difference in those engines and why you'd pick one over the other why you'd pick a diesel engine over a gas engine or an air-cooled over a liquid-cooled. So we'll talk about that in this class. The other thing is, uh, hopefully as we go through here, you'll get to see the different brands and which ones make it real easy to work on and which ones are very hard to work on, which ones are hard to get parts for, and uh, we'll cover some of those issues. <coughs> so that's kind of what this class will be. As we go through this class, starting on Monday or Tuesday of next week, we're going to talk about tech manuals. If we work on a piece of equipment, we will use the tech manuals. Tech manuals are your Bible. Those are what tell you how to take something apart, how to put it together. And without it, a technician is pretty much lost. You can kind of fumble your way through and guess and experience. You can get through some things, but without a tech manual, all of the adjustments and specs that you need don't exist. So every shop that's out there needs to have a tech man on every machine that they own. Otherwise, you're just making guesses and it's not going to run properly. And every time we go and do something in the shop, it'll refer to something in a tech manual. I won't say go out there and adjust it. 
and I won't tell you exactly how to do it. I'll say it's in this book. Find it. The topics that we're going to cover are down here towards the bottom. So my phone number is in the middle. Office hours if you need to get a hold of me. And at the bottom, it talks about different things that are in the class. And we're going to start out with this week on safety equipment. If you're going to work in a shop, the first thing you should do, no matter where you're at, is locate where the safety equipment is. You don't want to wait till there's a fire to say, do we even have fire extinguishers? Or cut your hand open and think, gosh, do we have a first aid kit here somewhere? Next week, we're going to talk about shop tools and fasteners. And that'll be about as much as we'll do. We're going to move into uh, operating, operators manuals and tech manuals. So we'll probably spend one day on operators and tech manuals. From there, we're going to go into oils, air filters, fuel systems, like, uh, basic systems, batteries. We're going to get into mechanical type stuff. So we're going to get into performing and understanding preventive maintenance. We're going to probably spend two full weeks doing that because there's a lot of information in there.